Villainous by It's Underslash Kingston on AO3. Episode 16, Chapter 11, League. I believe it's most fair if all of us, including you, get to ask whatever questions we like. Of course, you can too. None of us can guarantee 100% truthful answers, but everyone has their tales. Kyogiri said, taking a seat in the chair furthest right on Ochako's left. Twice sat beside him, then Toga directly in front of Ochako. Dobby's chair was beside Toga's, though he opted to stand and lean against the wall. Did he think he was cooler? Shigaraki ended at the line, with the chair furthest to Ochako's right. Was the idea that either Kirigiri or Shigaraki could stop her if she bolted? They'll be the quickest to get up, other than Dobby, of course. I'll start. Twice stuck his hand up quickly, as if he was in a classroom. Why do you want to be here? Ochako kept a straight face and looked at him. Kirigiri was right. Everyone had tails. She'll just have to try and see just the right amount of nerves to get a job interview with the League. I need the money. I grew up poor, and that's how my parents have stayed. You don't make much money without an agency and a pro hero license, but you have to pay money to get both of those. It's rigged against anyone who isn't from a wealthy family to begin with. She looked down at the table. This was the sad truth. The ugly, unmentioned side of being a pro. The big name agencies, like Hawks, Endeavors, and All Might's, all wanted heroes with quash, ones that made them look good. If they accepted any broke heroes for hire they could get, it'll give them trashy reputation. I see, Kirigiri replied, as yellow eyes fixed on Ochako. She seemed off, not lying per se. He heard the hero system was brutal, but she wasn't telling the full truth. Then again, no one ever did. So what made this time different? She was trying to cover up her tails. That was certain. He threw that detail in there to mess with her. If she was too busy lying, he'd see what nervous habits she had and discern lies from truth. If she was too focused on hiding her lies, burying the truth, it might just slip out, leaving her fumbling in her own web of mistakes. It was now a balancing act the hero couldn't have time to train for. And she couldn't fail. Not here. Not now. My turn. Are you really betraying Yue? Won't they find out? Togo asked curiously. She knew the answer already, but she still asked. Yeah, I wish it didn't have to be so sudden. That they'll just change the system and let everyone win, but they won't. Ochako looked around the table. I've changed my suits and allies, but I still have both my hero suit and name in the records at Yue. I'm going to keep going there and keep my appearances. If I don't, it will just paint a target on my back. No one knows that I'm here. Hmm. Toga nodded. Oh, uh, Toga mentioned something about a suit maker in the league who can help me with my new one? Ochako added, glancing around again. Oh, me. Twice pointed towards himself. I made my suit, Toga's, and Mr. Compressed. Oh, and Spinner's. He proudly proclaimed. Here's the design I made. Ochako took the paper from her pocket slowly, careful to not raise suspicion, over a piece of paper. She placed it on the table and slid it to twice. Do you think it's doable? He looked over it for a moment, humming. Kirigiri eyed the design as well. Yeah, it looks nice too. You'll need to bring me the stuff for it, though. I sew them and make them. I'm not an errand boy. I will. Ochako smiled at the gray-masked man. Thank you. He nodded in return, possibly smiling too. Ochako was getting better at reading his expressions through the mask. Back on topic. Do you intend to fully cooperate with the League of Villains? If you don't give us your full support, we might not be able to help you. Kirigiri said sternly, casting a glance at Twice, who crossed his arms. Yes, I believe that the League is going to help the world change for the better, including reworking the standards and experiences for hiring anyone, whether they be heroes, villains, or quirkless civilians. Ochako looked at the Miss Man as she spoke. She felt strongly about this topic. 
And while she believed the League wasn't the way to go about it, she wanted to change the world. That's correct. Shigaraki spoke, scratching at his neck. A League of Villains will help anyone be treated equally, and the world of lawless chaos, heroes, and villains will mirror into the same group, and will all be on level ground, no fame or fortune for those willing to sell their lives and names to agencies or big corporational companies. Everyone will be the same. He smiled creepily, his eyes peering through the fingers of his hand mask at Uchako. What do you think about that, Negate? I think that if everyone is treated equally, with no special attention to those who were born in the spotlight, then there won't be as much jealousy. If you don't have something, it will be your fault for not working hard enough to attain it, not because someone decided that your power wasn't merchandisable. Ochako replied quickly, balling her fist under the table. She agreed to a point. A lawless land wasn't good for everyone, but an even playing field? Now that's what she wanted. Of the three things she dreamed of, that was a big one, for everyone to be treated equally, quirk or not. The second was to make people smile the way heroes did for her when she was little. The final and perhaps largest driving focus was money. Financial stability for her and her parents to be able to take care of them as was always done for her. I agree. Shigaraki nodded. How many do you know about the big name heroes and UA? Dobby asked, finally joining the others at the table. He pulled his chair back further than the others settling about a foot behind everyone else. Maybe he just didn't like being seen. Not much outside of public knowledge when it comes to pros. I know the layouts of UA and where the security cameras don't cover. Ochako shrugged. She knew a little more than that, and with the clearance she'd been getting from on the mission, along with some old-fashioned breaking in, she could definitely find more information. Dami nodded contently at her response. Explain your quirk and how you could assist the League. Kirigiri said, after moments of silence. My quirk is zero gravity. I can negate the gravity of objects or people I touch with the pads of my fingers. Ochako held up her hand to demonstrate. She touched her hands together, and she lifted into the air, floating around for a moment. It lasts for as long as I want it to, and I stop it by touching my fingers together. But using it too much or trying to lift really heavy things make me sick. She landed back on the ground and sat down in her chair again. Sick as in nauseous, not ill. Toga giggled at the quick clarification. She thought about duping the leak, maybe lying about how long it lasted, or saying there was a limit to the range, but decided against it. If the leak found out that she lied, there wouldn't be a chance to talk her way out of it. Twice clapped at the display, but stopped once Dobby glared at him. Continue. Here Gary gestured once twice had stopped. I can help with all sorts of things. I'm a UA student, so I can easily get anyone in and out of the main building or dormitory. Plus, it would be easy to find cameras or classified information, if that's what you're after. Ochako paused to think. I'm not sure what else to add. She rubbed the back of her head nervously. Does your quirk passively affect anything you touch? Shigaraki asked. Yeah, anything I touch with all fine fingers. She held up her hands showing the pads in her fingers. He nodded. And I ask about all your quirks. Ochako looked around. She already knew, but after hearing from Toga that she needed blood to transform, Ochako didn't plan on trusting the files 100%. Twice spoke first. I can make doubles of anything. A second twice appeared behind him, dressed in the same shoe. And if it's me, he can make doubles too. He adds, and a third twice appears behind them. The third one waved happily. Stop fooling around. Toby groaned. After receiving a mean look from all three of twice, the doubles melted into mud like substance and disappeared within seconds. I already told you mine. Toga smiled at the hero. If I take someone's blood, I become them. Toby was next. He simply held his hand out, palm up. A blue fire spurged up and flicked around in his hand for a moment. Just fire. You already know all of this, don't you? Shigaraki smiled curiously, looking at Ochako. Mostly, yeah. She answered. It seemed like being honest was the best thing to do, since it eliminated some of the stress that came with lying, and avoid the possibility of her getting caught in the act. 
I didn't know that Toys' doubles could double or that Toga needed blood to transform. I doubt Yue knows any of that either. They aren't telling the students anyways. Really? Shigaraki asked, rhetorically. He looked over at Twice and Toga. We may be able to use that. What were Dobby's, mine's, and Kuragiri's listed as? Spare no details. His attention was on Ochako again. Dobby was blue fire, said he'd be hotter than Endeavors. Kirigiri was the ability to create portals that transported anything that went through it. And your crook was decay, so anything you touched became decaying. Ochako filled them up. If you aren't lying, only my quirk is completely documented. No drawbacks, or other notes added to them. Kirigiri said, turning toward Shigaraki. You is really slacking. Dobby chuckled dryly. Do they even have pictures of us? Ochako wasn't sure how to feel. Yue had completely information about four out of the five League members. That really didn't bode well with the entire school and their students. What could they be missing from the records? Hero? Dobby snapped his fingers to get her attention. You home? Oh, sorry. I didn't think that was a real question. Ochako chuckled. They have mug shots of To- Ochako chuckled. They have mugshots of Toga and twice with and without his mask. Shigaraki and you have blurry still frame images from wherever they could find them. Wait, should she be telling them this? It wasn't a good idea to get caught in a lie, but to tell them the entire truth? Maybe not the best idea. What about Karaguri? Shigaraki gestured to him with his thumbs. He isn't listed as a member of the League. He has a record, but no one got to see it, and they showed the class... Ooh, to look out for, Ochako said. Rude, Kirigiri replied. I'm a threat too. That's all you get from me, though. I'm not handing out information cost-free. Ochako crossed her arms and tried to look serious. She seemed to succeed, as no one pressured her for another answer. Of course you'll be compromised for your help. Shigaraki nodded to Kirigiri, who placed a wad of cash on the table. This for now. After you continue working for Toga for a bit longer, we'll make you an official member. We just need to know you can trust a drop-out hero. The pale man smiled slyly. Ochako took the money, slipping it into her pocket. Makes sense. She replied, trying to match his easygoing energy. Do I get to know what I'm working on? I have your burner number. I'll tell you when necessary. Most likely Toga will fill you in. He stood up itching the side of his neck. He used the palm of his hand to push the chair back under the table. If we're all out of questions, then I suggest we leave. I'm done. Dobby stood up, sliding the chair under the table. I have nothing else to ask, Kirigiri said, copying the same motions. Yeah, Toga nodded. I don't have any more questions. Oh, wait, let me get your number, Negate. Twice pulled out his phone. I'll text you what stuff I need for your suit. All right. That had been several hours ago. The League had presumably gone back to their base. They all went through the purple portal that Karagiri opened, and Ochako had returned to Yue immediately checking the lock as she entered the balcony. It was only 9.45 p.m., as they left way sooner than expected. If they had gone at the original time, Ochako probably wouldn't have been back till 2 or 3 in the morning. At least she got her beauty sleep. The gravity hero had gotten dinner at the nearby fast food joint, Burger Queens, so she wouldn't have to make anything. She wasn't used to getting fast food or spending lavishly, but the League's money? <laughs> she was living better. Maybe this was the second payoff from sneaking into the League. The first, of course, remaining being able to stop them eventually. She emptied her pockets, intended to put her phone on charging and counted the money she received. When she remembered that Sue might have called, she turned on her personal phone and internally panicked at the two missing calls she'd gotten from her friend, one at 3.23 p.m. While Ochako was eating lunch, the other at 4.56 p.m., while Toga's walking her to the warehouse. What excuse am I supposed to use here? I told her I'd answer if she called me before 8. Ochako groaned, resting her hands in her head. It wasn't particularly good that the first thing she thought about was an excuse but that didn't stop her from doing it anyways. She called Sue. 
hoping that the frog girl would pick up. Hey, Ochako. She didn't sound happy. Hey, Sue, I'm really sorry about that. When you called around three, I was making lunch. I forgot to take my phone when I went on a run around five before dinner. Sai came from the other end. I figured it was something like that. I really, really didn't mean to ignore you like that, Sue. Are you busy now? I wanted to talk to you about the museum. Of course not. I'd love to hear about the aquatic heroes. A happier, lighthearted chuckle came from Sue's end. Oh, Mina wants to say something. Hey, Ochako, hope the dorms aren't too lonely. Mina's voice rang through the speaker. I'm managing. She forced a light laugh. I've been hanging around with some friends from different schools and going out more since classes are canceled for the week. I'll tell you about my day, but Sue probably wants to do that. Mina giggled. A sigh fumbled noise. Probably Mina handing the foe back to Sue. Okay, Ochako, have you heard about the sea moth? Or maybe the Cyclops? No, I haven't. Are those heroes? To some people, yeah. For starters... Okay, so that was interesting. Um, we can already see Ochako starting to have a hard time balancing life. You know, balancing villainy life and balancing, you know, typical, you know, I'm, I have friends life, you know? Um, I should not be eating while I'm doing an outro. Uh, sorry. <laughs> started putting food in my mouth but I realized I'm my outro is literally me talking I can't be doing that but um no yeah it quite literally we could see her struggling which is understandable why she's struggling I mean I, I fucking would struggle I mean I am already debating how I'm gonna make it with having a job plus this plus managing my so actually my social life is pretty dead I think the only person I talk to on a regular basis happens to be Sunny oh my god the only person I talk to right now is Sunny I really need to change that. I need to, I need to get better with my social life. I need to, oh, well, in my defense. No, I talked to Willow. I talked to Willow, Caden, and Al. Oh, actually it's more Willow and Caden. Um, but in my defense, those three people, kind of four, uh, Al kind of jumps in and here and out. Uh, again, I don't blame Al, uh, <laughs> time zones. But um, in my defense, those are the people who talk to me first and stuff like that, so yeah. Everybody else doesn't, so, um, yeah. Anyways, uh, this was an interesting chapter. I mean, it's, 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 it's an interesting chapter. Uh, Ochako, how much did I pay you? Do I need to turn to villainy? Do I need to turn to villainy? I'm not turned to villainy. Anyways, as always, my rain drops. Make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content. And thank you so much for watching.